Hi everyone, this is Phil from Phil Antone Consulting, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a new downloadable product that you can find on my website. These are pre-configured MDF door profiles that you can download and import directly into your Mosaic software. And this is going to allow many of you to provide your clients with new options for MDF door profiles. Let's get right into it and see if we can't start cutting out today. After we download the folder from our email, we're going to navigate to the file explorer and find the zip folder. Now we have to unzip this first. We're going to right click, extract all. This could also say unzip or decompress. And now we have our Tacoma one piece download unzipped. Inside we have the door files, panel tool groups, and a data sheet. After we've unzipped the folder, we're going to open up Mosaic. We're not going to open up a job yet. We're going to go straight to View, Optimizer. We'll go to Libraries, CNC Tooling, and Panel Tool Groups. We'll hit Import on the right and navigate to our folder. For this example, we're using Tacoma One Piece and we're going into the panel tool groups. Now you only need one of these panel tool groups, whether or not you have a half inch, 7 16 or 3 8 down shear for your mid-size clean out bit. I'm going to pick the half inch down shear. It's going to ask us if we want to overwrite tools in the library. Yes, we do. And the reason why all these tool groups have generic tools attached to them is so that they do not overwrite your current tool data. After we've imported the panel tool group, there's a few important things to note. All of the tools that come inside of the tool group are generic tools. We're going to left click and replace them with a different tool from our actual tool set. So left click twice, generic half inch down shear. I will select a half inch down shear instead. And this is all we have to do to replace the tools. Now this is a unique situation, generic eighth inch round over. I would recommend going over to your tool list and we are going to choose the eighth inch round over, go to tool properties, and we're going to copy tool. We do not want the generic one. It has a bunch of zero values that we can not actually use. We'll switch to eighth inch round over. If you're using the 125R from Frost, I would label like so. But let's go back to the panel tool group. This generic eighth round over, we want to choose our eighth inch round over. The 30 degree sharp corner. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. Pick the actual 30 degree sharp corner. And there you have it. This panel tool group is ready to attach to a door file. Now, one other very important note to make. In Mosaic with panel tool groups, if you zoom in what you see is what you get on the router. As long as the tool geometry of your tools in Mosaic actually match the physical tools. Most of these roundovers have a flat at the bottom. This one in particular, the 125R, has a 64th of a flat, so 0 0.015. If for whatever reason you're getting an edge on your bead, we can come into this panel tool group and right now we have a 5 thousandths offset on this tool. We can use the offset like a calculator. So we can say, I want to move it over another 10 thousandths. So we'll say plus 0 0.01 and enter. And now we can see that tool has moved over just a titch. Now this isn't actually what we want to do for this because this is set up for the 125R. But if you're using different tooling, or you're trying to make your own modifications, just remember that we can use these as calculators. Now one caveat with this, if your tool lengths are wrong on your CNC, then you will not get this. It will look different. And that is the first place we wanna look when troubleshooting our MDF doors, is manually adjusting the height of our tools at the controller. And we're still not going to open up a job yet. We're going to go to Libraries, Doors. 
And in here, we're going to make a new library. So right now I have the mosaic doors and standard. This will help declutter the door library situation. We're going to hit the horizontal bars, hit the green plus, and for this one, I'm going to say pack doors. All right, hit the X. Now we have a blank slate. What we're going to do is go over to routed. And then once we're in the routed tab, we're going to hit import. We're going to navigate to our downloads, Tacoma one piece download, and into our door files. Now let's bring in one of them. We're going to bring in the door. For the naming system on all these doors, we have the door style, whether it's a one piece or two piece, DR for door, and SR325. This refers to the style and rail width. Our PR refers to the panel recess. These are very important numbers. They're already set up and coordinated with the panel tool group, so you don't have to do too much thinking about it. We'll import the rest of our files. We have a base end panel in here. We have a drawer, DWR. We have a reduced rail drawer, RR. We have the tall end panel and the wall end panel. Now with these reduced rail drawers, sometimes the profiles can be a little wide on our custom profiles and it's okay to turn them into a slab. And once we've imported these six doors, we're gonna hit okay and then we're gonna make a new job. Now in our new job, we're gonna go to settings we're going to pick our pack door library and now we want to fill out all of our settings so that we can build a template for later use. After we start a new job and select the new door library, we'll start with base doors. We'll find Tacoma one piece door. Click OK. Now these are really important. So we want cutout tool as normal. Routed door tool. This is panel tool group, the same thing. We're going to simply pick our Tacoma one piece. We'll make sure glass door is deselected and we'll pick whichever pocketing tool we're using. I'm using the 40 mil PCD. I'll put that in there. And I will go through here and pick the rest of our doors. Now top drawer front, we could use default drawer for a slab or one piece RR or reduced rail. And this is all the same exact thing. We're choosing the panel tool group, picking our pocketing bit, clicking OK. For the mid and bottom drawers, we typically want our DWR file, so our actual drawer. We'll click on Tacoma. And then we'll do our last drawer. Pick our pocketing tool. Looks like we missed a pocketing tool, so we'll just go back and select that. And one really great thing about these panel tool groups and door files is that you always know whether it's correct or not, because this says Tacoma one piece door. And down here in the panel tool group, we can see Tacoma one piece. It matches up for easy verification. We'll go to the end panels and we'll do the same thing. BEP for base end panel. And there we have it. Once you've verified all of your drawers, your drawer guides, your hinges, your library attached to the template, we can go up to template in the top right corner, hit the horizontal bars, press the green plus. We're going to say yes. And normally I would name these with an underscore and the acronym of our company. And then we're going to say frameless one piece Tacoma. That way, whenever we start a job, we can come in here, click on the template and now all the information is set up for us. Now, if you want to cut a sample of one of these doors, 
and when we go to the order tab we can click on doors and you'll notice we have a different door library selected than the one that we already created so you can go back to settings and you'll notice that up here in the top left there's an order entry and a room one so order entry we're going to choose our template that we created go back to the order tab and now we have all of our options for this example we're going to use a door and I like a 12 by 18 for a sample door. And you'll notice profile 2 is already selected for Tacoma. For reference, profile 1, 2, and 3 refer to 1, 2, and 3. And back to the order. We can look at this door in the 3D viewer. And go to perspective, click on filled, and we can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Now we can go to cut list and optimize. Now we're in the optimizer. By now you should have gone through all of your tools and figured out the correct feeds and speeds we should have already changed our material thickness in mosaic for mdf doors to reflect an accurate thickness and now we have our door we'll go to optimizer part spacing i'm leaving at 9 16 we're going to optimize and we're going to test out one of our sheets so let's left click and i like to do a sample door before i cut a huge batch of doors this helps us dial in our tool heights. I'm going to hit G-code, and then I'm going to hit Calculate. Now this is a great example of what to do when you don't have the right tool in the tool set. It's looking for 8th inch round over, 125R, not in the tool set. Okay. So we'll click out of there. We're going to go back up to Libraries and CNC Tooling. And then we'll go to our tool set. It looks like we have everything we need except that eighth inch round over. In this case, I'm going to find our eighth inch round over, insert tool, and I'm going to put it up where the 90 degree is and remove that 90 degree. Now you'll want to verify before you cut that the right tool is in the right slot. Now, we don't have to re-optimize or anything. We're going to go to generate G-code, calculate. Now we get a calculation. And I would highly advise that before you cut your first door, look through these tool paths. So we're going to hit the generate G-code, calculate. We have our shaped pocket with our 40 mil PCD. We have a half inch down shear. I'm going to open this up a little bit so I can see what's going on. Half inch down shear is doing all kinds of movement here. We'll have our eighth inch down shear, eighth inch round over, 30 degree sharp corner, and our three eighths compression for cutout. This is the exact order everything is going to happen in. You can also verify how many passes the tools are taking. Eighth inch round over, for example, we can simulate maybe at a slower rate. After you've run the simulation and looked toolpath by toolpath, and you've verified everything looks correct. You can view all patterns and generate your G-code. That wraps it up for this video. I will be making more content in the future. Hit the subscribe button if you want to get an update on that, and thank you so much for watching.